So ionic compounds will do whatever they need to to get the net charge to be zero. That's where they like to be. So like sodium chloride, the cation was plus one, the anion was minus one. And when they came together, the net charge was zero. And that's a really easy one to deal with because it's just one and one. So what happens when you have a charge like two plus and three minus? Well, then it gets a little bit more tricky. So a lot of teachers will just say, okay, use this method and this is how you find it out. But I think that a lot of people struggle with why is it that we balance these like charges and why does it, why does it work that way? So before I even get into a method of how to find you know, what ionic compounds are, I'm gonna explain why they do what they do. So let's say we had a jar full of water, right? There's a bunch of water in here. And in the water, I'm gonna dump a bunch of chloride ions, right? Now, each of the chloride ions has a charge of minus one. So I'm just gonna write minus because it's easier than writing the one, right? So there's a bunch of chloride ions in there. Now let's say I take an aluminum ion. So that's aluminum, since it's right here on the periodic table, we know it likes to lose three electrons and have an overall charge of plus three. So, if I were to throw in one atom of, or one ion of aluminum, three plus, what's gonna happen? Well, that positive charge is gonna start attracting these negative charges. And the first thing that's gonna happen is this aluminum, I'm gonna go ahead and draw him right here, three plus. That's one ion, right? It's one unit. It's, you can think of it as an atom with a charge. That's basically what it is. Well, that guy's gonna pull one of these chloride ions to him, right? Cl, and that's minus. This is not drawn to scale, by the way. So now, overall, we have a charge of, let's see, three plus minus one. Well, that's gonna be two plus. Well, that's still charged. He's not happy because he's not at zero, right? And there's plenty other of these minus charges around. So he's gonna go ahead and pull another chloride to him. And we have Cl minus. And now that's gonna lower this charge from plus two because it was, these two together were plus two. And now we add one more and we get plus one. So that's the overall charge, right? because you have three plus minus two, and we have plus one. Well, he's still not happy, right? He still has this positive charge just sticking out there. So he's gonna pull another chloride to him. And let's see, now what happens? We have three plus, and then we have minus one, minus one, minus one. We have zero, so the net charge is zero. Now he's happy. Now, let's think about this as one unit. Now that he has that charge, right? He, he has no charge, is the net charge of zero. All these guys are happy. This chloride doesn't wanna go away because then it would have a charge of negative one. It doesn't like that. It likes to have no charge. This aluminum, if, if the chlorine went away, then it would have you know, it, it would be back up to plus one. It doesn't like that. Likewise, nothing else is gonna come here because it's neutral. It's, it doesn't wanna react with anything. So it's happy in the way that it is. And now if you write a formula for this, you would write this as aluminum, Al, and then Cl3. And down here, the subscript indicates how many of each atoms there are. If there's no subscript, it means it's just one. So, and this, this is an ionic compound because it's, it has you know, different ions in it and they're all bound together. So, 
let's think about what would happen if we took a bunch of calcium ions, say Ca plus, 2 plus, sorry, and it's 2 plus because, why? Because it's right here. It's going to lose two electrons. Okay. And then we added a bunch of, let's say, nitride ions. Now, nitride, remember IDE, means that it's a monoatomic anion. And so that must have come from nitrogen, because nitride. So let's say we have a bunch of N3 minuses in here. OK. Let's do one more. So what's going to happen? All right. Well, of course, some of them are going to be attracted to each other, right? So I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's say these two are attracted together. OK, so we'd have Ca2+, and that's going to bind with N3-. minus. And now, those, those guys, we're not going to consider them anymore. Now, overall, we have a net charge of minus 1, right? So what's going to happen? Well, if you have a net negative charge, it's going to pull something positive towards it. So let's go ahead and pull that Ca2+. Plus. So we have another Ca2+. Plus. And now the charge was negative 1, but now we've added 2. So we have a net charge of plus 1. Let's just check that. We have plus 4, because that's plus 2, plus 2. That's 4. And minus 3, yep, that's plus 1. OK. So now what happens? Well, now it, again, now we have a net positive charge. So it's going to pull something negative towards it. So here comes that nitrogen, or nitride, excuse me. It's another N3 minus. And now we've overshot it again. So we have a net charge of, let's see, that's negative 6 and plus 4. That's negative 2, so an overall charge of 2 minus. Well, now we have a negative charge. It's going to pull a positive charge towards it, right? And now we have this calcium that could come along. Calcium comes along, sticks on there, Ca2+. Plus. And now let's look at that. 2 plus cancels that out. And now we have a net charge of 0, which is where it wants to be. It always wants to, it's going to keep going until it gets down to that zero. So now that it's there, everybody's happy. Nobody wants to leave. Nobody else wants to come along because it has zero charge. So we're going to think of this as one unit. It's going to move and behave as one unit. And how are we going to write that? Well, we have nitrogen and calcium. So which comes first? Well, of course. Since cations are on the left, we're going to put the calcium first. We're going to have the nitrogen here. And let's just count them up. Let's see, we have one, two, three calciums. So I put a subscript three there. And we have two nitrogens. So there you go. Now we have Ca3 and 2. And to name that, we would say the cation name, just normal which would be calcium. And this, since it came from nitrogen and it's a monoatomic ion, it's nitride. Now, there's a much easier way to go about doing this than just writing all these circles out and trying to match them all together. But I wanted you to see why it, we write this stuff and what it really means to balance out these charges.